The ledger rig. With over 40 years of recreational fishing experience, I've used a lot of ledger rigs with various knots and seen a lot of rigs break on those knots. And sometimes with heartbreaking fish swimming off into the sunset, dragging behind it a lead weight. Eventually, I settled on a method and a knot for tying my own ledger rigs. Little doggy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Also commonly referred to as a dropper rig, it's probably the most commonly used rig nice by boaties and shore anglers alike. It comes in a wide variety of arrangements and are commercially available in New Zealand as bait flies and sabaki rigs, the ever popular flasher rigs, there's the slider rig, running ledger rig, poker rigs, etc. etc. They are not the most aerodynamic rig, so for a land-based fisherman, some distance is sacrificed from the cast, but you can deploy more than one bait, and the rig has good connectivity to the baits to indicate those smaller nibbles. Here I'm fishing on a gloomy day in the Manukau Harbour. I'm using the same homemade two-hook ledger rig throughout the session, that eventually cut one hook off as there were a lot of fish about, Relentless. one was to hook a decent one, a second hook can often get fouled in the fight, resulting in a loss. Come on that way. Whoa, 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 whoa. God. You're right. Oh, mate, that just got smashed. Ledger rigs Still are notorious it. for getting snagged over rough terrain. With more than one baited hook and a lead weight hanging underneath, there is a lot to get snagged with, especially if a fish is attached to one part of it. To mitigate this, I use a lighter line than the main line to attach the sinker. A little red. He's got a line gun. The knot I use is simple and proven. It's not the dropper loop knot that a lot of you would know. I don't have much trust in that knot for tying up ledger rigs. In fact, this is actually the backbone knot. It was used by commercial longliners to put knots in their main lines to stop the traces from sliding together before they developed tools and machines that could do the job easier. It was then adapted by lazy fishers to put a quick and easy loop in their line to slide a hook on without having to cut the line. So the knot I use is the uni knot that you should all know. The proven strongest of all the simple fishing knots out there. And you should also know the double uni knot for quickly joining two lines together. And now there is what I call the inline uni knot. And this is the knot I use. So at the end of this video is a demonstration on how I implement this inline uni knot for a ledger rig, but for now, well, proof is in the pudding. Ledger rig. Oh yeah, 
Oh, it's nice. Keep up. Oh, I even get my bait back. Oh, that's so dangerous. I'm so allergic to wasps. It didn't sit up in a very good spot, did we? <laughs> I was looking at my seat. And there's two massive wasps nests right above my head. That's an eagle ray. Oh yeah, big eagle ray. Good fun though. Oh. It's not brand new, it's old, it's just been reversed. Mega rays in this house. Big tree, is it? That's a little kingy. Oh my god, it's a red kingy. Ow, ow, ow. How's that, eh? Back fishing the West Coast. It's nice and calm now, it looks like you could easily stand down there, but every now and again one of these little sets comes through and the wave will double up and come right over this whole area. That's why you stand back and watch the waves for a good 10 to 15 minutes really. See how big those big big sets are when they do come through. Let's 
Oh, yes. Ooh. Keeping him. Here's my sink kit. Well, the GoPro's on 6% for some stupid reason, even though it's on the charge all day. I might miss out on a bit of footage. Hey, mate, you're fish. I actually saw your car there. Oh. Dark Moon Anglers out here. <laughs> might be able to pick your brain. Well, what sort of traces do you use mainly inside the harbour? Uh, ledges, really. Put in the, in the harbour. Yes. Oh, yo! Oh, the guy from the Timmis jump. Yeah, you're in, bro. It's a fish. Kawa. Kawa, yeah. Definitely Kawa. Oh, that's a decent bloody fish, isn't it? Choice. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. Would you, would you eat it? Oh, I'd eat it. No, oh, then eat it, then eat it. I mean, if you chuck it on no, the no. live and it doesn't work, then I can eat it afterwards. No, nah, because then the, the, like, the stress enzymes go through the flesh, it won't taste as good. Oh, if you want to eat it, then eat it. But if you get another, then I'll use it as a live. But take one for a feed first. Feels like it. Feels very trevally ish. It is a tree. Just a bit of weed. Good one. Nice one. Do you want the torch on it or? Just okay. point at the fish with the camera and the light. Holy crap, I just got another one in the middle of the night. It's a good fish. It's over. <laughs> On the ledger rig, a little bit of cowboy bait. I told you they're here, eh? Yeah, yeah, choice. That one there is the money shot, yep. How's that, bro? Choice. Manukau Harbour, <laughs> Kingy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you. I start off with four pieces of nylon. I've got a little bit of lighter 20 pound mono. I've got two pieces of trace line at 80 pound and I've got my main trace line at 80 pound also. That's about 1.2 meters long. Those two pieces are about 500 mil long. And that's, I don't know, seven, six, seven hundred long, doesn't really matter. Plus a sinker, two hooks, a couple of beads and a swivel. And I'll start off by putting the hooks onto the traces. And I use the long line knot. And I like to put a little bead on. And that way if I'm fishing in the dark, I can see where the hooks are. Got our first one ready, get our second one, same knot again. Quick and easy that knot. But this rig is not a quick and easy rig to tie. I generally tie these up at home, have them all ready to go in separate plastic bags. We get our swivel. And attach our swivel straight onto our main line. And here we use the uni knot. Go around as many times as you feel comfortable with. Cut that trim off. One. Step two, we're going to attach our first trace. Just get that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to come down the swivel to about where I want my first trace to come off. I'm going to grab my trace, 
sit that on with a hook if you can get the hook to face down with the curve of the line bring it through and then we're going to do a loop there right in the middle and pull that through to get our first one now obviously I'm pulling a, a short tag through from the trace and a very very long tag through from the rest of the rig let's go over that that's sitting up there that line's coming off there we're doing an inline uni knot with these two lines and I've got a sh the short tag coming off and the long tag coming off so now we're going to go through and we're going to do about four wraps bring that big long tag all the way through each time just trying to keep good control of the knots so it doesn't turn into a big random monster and I generally don't go through five times because the knot gets a little bit out of twistiness and that's what it should look like and that's going to come together now we're going to put that in our mouth and just give it a little bit of moisture now this is the trick you have to pull this knot tight you have to hold on all four ends and put a lot of boogie on it being very mindful that you've got a hook in one of those ends you do not want that to go into your hands so we need to put some real good boogie into that pull it on tight now we're going to grab the hook end and the swivel end and we're going to pull these lines apart we can put a little bit of boogie into the knot there. You see it clinches up a bit. Now, if that clinched up into a big fist and it looked like a big mess, cut it off, start again. It means you didn't put enough boogie into it to start with. But that's what it should look like. Now, now we can cut our short tag end off close to the knot. Because we've put a lot of boogie in there, we can actually cut it off quite close. So you don't have that silly little patty there poking out, catching onto things, making a big tangle all the time. And that there is our first hook. Set up. So we're going to repeat that process, but come down our mainline trace. It's probably about 300 mil. And that's where I'm going to have my second trace, which is all ready to go. Same again. Get it about halfway down. Try and get that to sit right. Doesn't always work out. One's twist. But if you can get that hook to sit outwards, it looks really good. Anyway, here we go. We're starting again. First loop. Second loop. Third loop, our big long tag end's getting shorter because we're on our second hook close to the end of the trace. Here's our fourth loop. We're going to pull that up nice and tight, put some moisture on it, and then heaps of boogie being mindful of the hook. And then we're going to do the same again here. Perfect. Now we're going to cut that tag off nice and close. And there is our second hook. And on the end, this is where we use the double uni knot. And we're going to attach this 20 pound line onto the 80 pound line. You should know this knot. It's just a uni knot around one end. And then using the tag end of the other to do a uni knot around the other end of the other line. In fact, you don't even need to do a uni knot here, you can do a quick figure eight or anything because it's just the bottom of the line. 
you can pull up nice and tight. But these are the double uni knot. Okay, our trim's off so they don't get in the way. And then onto this, I will attach the sinker. And once again, you can just do a uni knot. Our trace. Here's our first knot. Here's our hook. I like the way that sits off the trace, hooks up, not out. 